ที่สอบฮัลโหลวันนี้คุณอยู่กับเราที่ Business Today I'm a l p a b a k a y a Here are the headlines Benchmark indices halt two-day gains. HTFC Twins, Reliance dragging the Sensex lower. Nifty below 18,000. Banks drag power stocks brighten. Zomato skids nearly 3% after CCI's probe order. Faces Competition Commission of India lends along with Swiggy for restrictive trade practices. Maruti to shift gears as it loses market share. Company announces big plans to populate the popular SUV market. Mini off-roader Jiminy likely to be launched soon. Sri Lanka's tourism industry on a downward spiral as foreigners flee the politically unstable nation. Special ground report on hotels emptying out due to protests and power blackouts. And Reliance, Amazon, Disney join the race for IPL media rights. Total bid amounts expected to cross 50,000 crore rupees. After a stellar rally yesterday, profit booking today brought the two-day winning streak of markets to a halt. After a volatile session, markets ending in the red, Sensex holding on to 60,000, though it fell 435 points. Nifty not able to hold on to 18,000, down about 100 points in trade. Losses in financial shares and the Nifty Bank in particular dragging headline indices lower. Gains in auto and power stocks, however, limited the downside. Broader markets put up a strong show after seeing the biggest jump in 13 years. HDFC and HDFC Bank shares fell around 2-3% to today. HDFC Bank, HDFC, Bajaj Finserv, Kotak Mahindra Bank and Indusind Bank were some of the top losers in today's session. On the other hand, power stocks rallied, posting 2-3% to gains. Adani Ports, NTPC, Tata Motors, Power Grid, Tata Consumer, some of the top nifty gainers today. Zomato shares were under pressure as investors turned cautious after the Competition Commission of India ordered a probe against the food delivery platform. CCI has ordered a detailed investigation against food delivery platform Zomato and its peer Swiggy for alleged unfair business practices with respect to their dealings with restaurant partners. The order came following a complaint filed by the NRAI or the National Restaurant Association of India. Zomato said its practices comply with the laws and that it would continue to work closely with the Commission to assist them with their investigation. Anurag Katriar, uh, trustee and RAI joining us now. Anurag, thanks so much for joining us. Take us through the uh, ongoing issue. This is a battle you've long been fighting. Uh, what really is the complaint? Uh, if you could uh, refresh uh, our viewers' memory. Sure. Thank you so much for having me here, first of all. So, you know, uh, this is something which is uh, around the delivery business that is being conducted by the Swiggy and Sumato. Uh, it first came into four in the month of August of 2019. We brought it to the notice of both the aggregators. We had several rounds of meeting. We spoke to DPIIT. We spoke to the Union Commerce Ministry. But unfortunately, you know, we could not make much headway. Uh, I will then now let, uh, take you through what were the issues that we were looking at. Uh, very broadly speaking, there were things of bundling up of services. Right. You know, in a fair marketplace, you are, you are supposed to uh, be allowed to be on the platform and you can sell and, uh, you know, directly to the consumer. Here in this case, what has happened, they have bundled the service. Unless you take the complete bouquet of services, which is from uh, discovery to delivery, you cannot even get listed. Mm -hmm. Then very important thing was, was about the data. These are my consumers who are ordering my food and uh, the aggregators today claim sole ownership over this data. Now, this is this is not right. Now, uh, the third point emerges from this. They use the same data mm. to figure out where is a demand, and then they create their own brands. They launch their own brands. Then, you know, so on and so forth. There are so many other issues. 
Uh, you know, I don't but know. What's the if, what's the like argument from the other side or the defense, really, uh, Anuraga? Because, uh, like you said, this has been uh, going on, and uh, they definitely have tech to their advantage. What could be a solution that would appeal to both? See, the solution is very simple. We all have to coexist in this ecosystem, and the solution is only if you start uh, thinking like a team and find a solution. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's not happening. Here is a situation where there are duopoly of these two guys. They, they control 95% of the delivery market. So there are things like, for example, they, you, you, you must have seen the year-round platform-driven discount. Mm. Do you know that they are funded entirely by the restaurants? Now, that is not fair. Let the restaurants decide if they want to offer a discount at what time and when. Sure. Similarly, the, the delivery commission rates, they are very unilateral. The terms of engagements are very unilateral. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you either accept it or, or just leave it. Okay. So, so these are not very healthy practices mm. in, in a fair market, so to say. And, and these were the things that we took to the Competition Commission of India. Uh, they heard both the sides, okay. uh, both Zomato and Swiggy also responded. And finally, in their uh, best wisdom, they thought that this case is worthy of ordering an investigation. And that's where we are today. All right. So we look forward to continuing to chat with you, Anurag, on how this evolves. Uh, you know, clearly sure. uh, there will be a, a lot of uh, uh, groundwork before we come to any conclusion. And we uh, will keep our eye on that investigation. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. While the auto industry has been in the eye of the storm since the pandemic hit, retail auto sales in FY22 have seen a 7% rise. As per FADA, PV sales have roomed 14% in FY22, but the two-wheeler and tractor segments remain under pressure. The Russia-Ukraine war, lockdown in China, rising fuel prices all continue to haunt the auto industry. Though the year-on-year -year sales show a positive trend, total retail sales in March took a beating, declining over 3% compared with sales in 2021. Moreover, India's largest car maker, Maruti Suzuki, saw its market share decline by about 5%, while Tata Motors' market share saw an exponential rise. Chetan Bhutani caught up with President of FADA, Vinkesh Gulati. Listen into a slice of that conversation. Tell us about the brief numbers, sir, the good, bad, ugly of the financial year performance. We come back to the March numbers later because the financial year matters a lot. Mm -hmm. Tell us the good, bad, and the ugly, sir. So I'll start with the good numbers. So obviously, uh, FY, uh, as compared to last year, so FY22 is better. We have seen all uh, all category put together some 7% plus numbers. So it's a good thing seeing the COVID things going on, the lockdowns happening and all those things. Uh, so and, and the major good thing is that we are seeing the two-wheeler category is also positive. The rural India, which is supported post the first lockdown, hasn't helped us for after the post uh, the second lockdown. The second lockdown actually hit the rural India more than the urban India, which has affected this. So all the entry-level vehicles, what we see in cars or two-wheelers or even the tractor segment, is seeing the degrowth because of that. The challenge is there. The segment, the negative segment is, uh, sentiments are there. Obviously, the increase in price in the two-wheeler because of BS4, uh, BS6 transition and then the uh, material cost going up has also hurt us badly. A product which you could have get, got at around 45,000 on road, today it is 60 plus, which is a major, major increase for a entry level segment, which is normally bought by a lower middle class or a lower class customer. Uh, similarly, it, similarly, it is happening in the entry level cars. So, two wheelers is really hit because of. Uh, the price going up, the Bharat or the rural India not coming back to its normal, even the fuel price is also going up. So that is also one deterrent there. There's a lot of hype on electric vehicle. We have seen good growth happening. But even the growth, what there's, it is happening in electric vehicle two-wheeler is on a very, very low base. Maruti has announced big plans ahead for the SUV market in India. In an exclusive conversation with Business Today TV's Chetan Bhutani, the company said it's preparing to populate the immensely popular SUV market in India. The company currently has just two offerings in the 46 vehicle strong SUV segment, and one of the new entrants could be its mini SUV, Jimny. Mr. Shivastav, uh, you spoke about, before I move on to the other set of numbers, 
you mentioned about suvs segment rising substantially in the market uh yeah. agreed that maruti is little lagging behind in that segment but any plans going forward in this financial year to uh, gear up and match that segment quality yeah so surely uh, suv is a segment which we have to look at very closely and i have mentioned that before as you said if you look at last year for example in the non suv uh, market maruti's market share is 66% it's the highest we have achieved ever in that uh, non suv segment but the suv segment itself has been growing where our market share is not so good largely because we have only two products brezza and escross whereas the industry has 46 suvs so we have to compete two of our models with 46 in the total 46 numbers in the so there is obviously a case for strengthening that portfolio and that's what we have mentioned and that's what we intend to do going forward why don't you get the jimny into india as soon as possible yeah so so that's an option which uh, uh, we have said uh, exists and uh, we have taken uh, market feedback and currently we are evaluating uh, the marketing plans for it and as soon as it is finalized uh, chetan uh, you will be the first person to know some of the biggest media players in the country are in the fray for ipl media rights according to highly placed sources the bid amount is set to explode with the likes of amazon and reliance joining the fray The others in the bidding war are Disney, Hotstar, Sony, and Z. More players are expected to bid for the rights as well. The media rights for five years, 2023 to 27, are up for grabs. The last auction netted BCCI more than 16,000 crores. This year is expected to cross 50,000 crore rupees. The auction will happen in June and 10th of May as the last date to submit the bids. For more on this, we have Nikhil Nas joining us, consulting editor, Sports India Today Group. Nikhil, thanks for being with us. Uh, how much money is BCCI expected to make from this auction? Well, how much money is the BCCI going to make uh, from the IPL? The short answer is a lot. Uh, as you know, IPL was already the cash cow for the BCCI. Those profits are going to double. In fact, even my triple for the BCCI. Just to give you a perspective, the previous uh, rights were sold for sixteen and a half thousand crore rupees. That would amount to roughly about fifty-four, fifty-five crore per IPL game. Now the bid bidding process is such that the base price that the BCCI is starting. targeting is at 32000 crore rupees so already double that's the minimum that anyone can bid for so doubling the profit is the minimum that the bcci is looking at but what i can tell you having spoken to a lot of people that would be involved with a lot of broadcasters and ott platform uh, my estimates suggest that the rights could go up till over 40000 crores close to 45000 crore that's actually triple of what it went for 16 and a half thousand crores whether there's merit in that sort of a price that's another debate but yes at the moment i can tell you 45000 crore and the other big change in this particular auction in the ipl is going to be that the last time around we remember you had a composite bid by which star had won the rights this time it's going to be divided into four parts that the bcci has made it very clear it's not going to be one consolidated bid the four parts are going to be indian television rights indian digital rights then overseas right and then a fourth bid where they will just sell 18 very important matches the opening match the playoffs as well as the night games of each weekend that will be sold separately as a package and you could for the first time see in the IPL a rival broadcaster also showing live IPL matches simultaneously as it goes to the other broadcaster that wins the right so nikhil how big does this make IPL in comparison to some of the other international sports leagues Right that's going to be very interesting how does it compare to other big global brands let me first give you an idea about where the IPL stands at the moment it was sold for 16 and a half thousand crore as i mentioned uh, that put it at 2.5 billion dollars over a period of 5 years that made it yearly was about half billion dollars that is as things stand right now now what happens is i've been estimating that it could go for more than double in fact close to triple the amount that clearly puts the IPL yearly at 1.5 billion dollars so that is something that the bcci can look forward to now how does that compare to some of the other major global sporting events uh, the likes of nba nfl and the english premier league so to give you an idea if ipl even goes for the triple the amount then it is at 1.5 billion dollars yearly the NFL the National Football League in the United States that's at 4.4 billion dollars in the current current deal that they have yearly uh, what is it for the English Premier League one of the most watched football leagues in the world 
again over four billion dollars yearly. Uh, the closest that the IPL could come to would be the NBA, the National Basketball League. That's at about 2.6 billion dollars yearly. Uh, that's what it's estimated at. And so, if the IPL does go for triple the amount as we are suggesting, then the closest they'll come to is the NBA. But even there, there'll be a huge gap of one billion dollars yearly. So, 1.5 billion for the IPL, 2.6 for the NBA. Whereas the EPL and the NFL are over four billion dollars uh, yearly as things stand. Thanks, Nikhil. And while IPL fever has gripped Indians with the start of a new season of the Cricket Premier League, there has been a drop in the count of product and service categories, advertisers and brands versus the previous season. During the first five matches of Tata IPL, the count of product and service categories dropped by 29%, while number of advertisers were down 13%. The number of uh, brands being advertised also declined by 15%. The big gainer this season is the e-commerce sector. The other big spenders are online gaming and pan masala. Let's take a very quick break on that note. Back in just a minute. solitude c'était très très lourd très très lourd nous on a souffert on a souffert on a beaucoup souffert bon après on a fait d'autres choses hein. on a un petit peu marché on a, on a bien mangé on a, on a pris du poids tout ça hein. On dansait dans, dans le séjour. On dansait dans le séjour. Oui, on mettait YouTube et tout ça. Là, et on dansait. Voilà, on faisait déjà mal. Les, 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 les balles, on faisait. On dansait. Cette année, oui, on a moins, on a moins eu la, la pêche. Voilà. You are watching. Welcome back. Newly appointed SEBI chairperson Nadbi Puri Butch today appeared before the parliamentary panel on finance over regulatory issues concerning capital markets. Though details of the hearing are not available, she was expected to be questioned about the recent irregularities at the National Stock Exchange. The NSC has been in headlines on account of the probe into the co-location scam as well as reports of a so-called Himalayan guru influencing decisions of the exchange. She was also to be part of a deliberation on issues related to IPOs, international financial service centers and alternate investment funds. He is one of the greatest disruptors in corporate history. And now Elon Musk has set his sights on Twitter, one of the greatest social media innovations ever. Hours after he became the single largest shareholder in the company, Musk has started needling the microblogging site. Although Twitter CEO welcomed Musk on board and said that he would bring more value to Twitter's board. Elon Musk is on a mission. The richest man in the world with an estimated net worth of $288 billion has plonked 1% of that amount to become the largest stakeholder in Twitter, with 9.2% stake in the company, four times that of Jack Dorsey, the high-profile co-founder of Twitter. When we decided that the bird was going to be Just hours later, the so-called passive stakeholder bared his intentions with this tweet. 
asking his 80 million followers and others whether they wanted an option to edit their tweets. Even the yes option was intentionally spelled wrong to highlight the handicap. An overwhelming three-fourths of the responses were yes. The poll was soon met by a comment from Twitter CEO Parag Agarwal asking Twitterati to be careful in answering the poll as its consequences would be important. The SpaceX pioneer has a tumultuous relationship with Twitter. Last month, he tweeted that Twitter was serving as a de facto public town square and that the social media giant's algorithm was curbing free speech. Not only this, last December, Musk tweeted this image of Parag Agarwal dressed up as a Soviet leader pushing Jack Dorsey into a river. Elon Musk's take purchase has energized Twitter, sending its stock up to 27% on Monday. Given Musk's deep interest in cryptocurrencies, there's also speculation that not only will he try to monetize the social media platform, but also link it to his crypto efforts. One thing I do think Elon Musk will look to potentially do over time is look to maybe you know throw crypto in as kind of um, some sort of payment processing platform uh, within Twitter. Um, I think that just makes sense given his stance uh, within um, that platform. What is clear is that the outspoken serial entrepreneur fully intends to have a larger role in Twitter, making life difficult for Parag Agarwal, who took over from Jack Dorsey just four months ago. Bureau Report, Business Today TV. The state of emergency in Sri Lanka has nearly crippled its tourism industry. The small island nation is heavily dependent on forex revenues from tourists. And as this ground report from Colombo by our reporter Ashutosh Mishra shows, the area is not the best tourist destination right now. Sri Lanka has some of the best beaches in the region. The waves are a surfer's paradise. The sightseeing attractions, a tourist magnet. Just not these days. Widespread protests have occurred across the nation following an economic meltdown. Spiraling prices, empty shelves in grocery stores, fuel running out at petrol pumps, extended blackouts because the government has no diesel and gas to power electricity generation. The end result is tourists are vacating their hotels and leaving. This couple from England had planned a 15-day vacation in Sri Lanka, but just a few days in, they are packing their bags. Uh, it's a mix of the power cuts, the curfews, even last night to check into this hotel. This road was blocked off because of the protests and it was very difficult to get in. I think it just makes the situation here very hard for us as tourists, but I'm sure even harder for people living here. I think there's a lot of uncertainty as well. Um, there's not a lot on social media um, and people back home, they don't really know what's going on either. Um, so it was just kind of a decision we made after being out in the street, seeing what was going on. Before the pandemic and the 2019 Easter bombing in Sri Lanka, which claimed 269 lives, including those of 45 foreign nationals, tourism accounted for nearly 5% of the island's GDP. In 2018, tourists brought in more than $5.5 billion. The amount fell a little in 2019 before plunging to about a $1 billion in 2020. In 2021, Sri Lanka earned just $634 million from tourism. The empty chairs in hotel restaurants is clear evidence of how dire the situation is. Occupancy rates in Colombo hotels have plunged. Tourists are cancelling their reservations. Somehow we had uh, our stock for the three, four days, another, but after that we are having the problem because uh, no guests want to stay in the non -AC room. Resort is still running fine. But City Hotel, we are suffering because of that problem and uh, we are receiving so many cancellations these days. Now I see this entire restaurant mostly looks like deserted, yeah. almost barely few exactly. Normally this uh, in the breakfast time you can see, now it's the breakfast time, uh, we are full normally. 
uh, in the free of us in the April month, we are full. Now you can see the no guesses inside. Sri Lanka has always been a favourite with Indian tourists because of its proximity, favourable foreign exchange rate and lower prices. However, these factors are no longer in play. Travel agents, the tourists, they are cancelling their bookings and of course because of the uncertainty that is growing in Sri Lanka that is forcing the tourists because they are apprehensive about the shortage of fuel, the shortage of food items, shortage of essentials, moreover the pro protests happen all over places, there are traffic jam, kiosk-like situation and of course the emergency curfew that we are seeing all over is now putting the just reviving tourism industry, the hospitality industry yet again in turmoil. With this ground report in Colombo, I'm Ashutosh Mishra for India Today. And here's what else is making news in the corporate world. GOBP and TBS Motor announced that they've agreed to explore the creation of a robust public EV charging infrastructure for electric two-wheelers and three-wheelers in the country, building on GOBP's growing network in this space. Under this proposed partnership, the customers of TVS Electric Vehicles are expected to get access to the widespread charging network of GOBP, which is also open to other vehicles. Digital payment platform PhonePay announced that it will double its total employee strength by the end of December 2022. The company is planning to hire for roles in engineering, product analytics, business development and sales departments. Social Commerce Unicorn, Misho, has announced that it will integrate its grocery business with its core application. The company said the integration with the core application will happen by the first week of May 2022. Nazara Technology has announced an investment of $2.5 million in the US-based gaming investment fund Bitcraft Ventures. Part of the sum will be invested upfront, while the remaining will be deployed over a period of three years. Global IT major Mindtree announced that it's made a strategic investment in Cope Health Solutions, a leading U.S. healthcare consulting company. The company aims to expand its healthcare business. And that's where we leave it on the show today. Thanks so much for watching. Vladimir Ashkenazi, a great pianist. Vladimir Mayakovsky, popular poet of the Soviet era. Vladimir Mensho, a Russian actor and filmmaker. Vladimir Makovsky, a popular Russian painter. Vladimir Zelensky, president of Ukraine. And Vladimir Putin, president of Russia. They all have one thing in common, Vladimir. After all, why do so many Russian and Ukrainian people's names start with Vladimir? What is the meaning of this word and why is this name so popular? Best of all, let's find out where the name Vladimir came from. This name is made up of two words, Vladeti and Meru. Vladeti means to rule, Meru means great or popular. It's believed that this name became popular because of Vladimir. This, the name of Vladimir Sviatoslavich also appears, who used to be the great prince of Kiev in 980 AD. It's believed that the successes of these two rulers made this name more popular. In today's date, this name can be seen in two forms. One is Vladimir, which is also used by Russian President Vladimir Putin. This name is used in Russia, Bulgaria, Serbia and Macedonia. The second is Vlodomir, which is used by Ukrainian President Vlodomir Zelensky. Usually, it's used only in Ukraine. So how common is the name Vladimir in Russia? The name Vladimir is the 95th most common name in the world. 40 lakh people of the world are using this name. You are watching India Today.